Uh, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for dialing in this morning. Uh, welcome to a renewal episode, so to speak, of uh, the House and Home Virtual Learning Series. This is really a kickoff, as everybody knows, to the Shelley Sutherland House Directors Institute, which will be kicking off in less than a month, which is hard to believe, so hard to believe. And we're so freaking excited to get to Nashville and to share that time with you guys and get the band back together, uh, so to speak. So we've got a really amazing experience planned for, for Nashville, and we can't wait to share it with each of you. Uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about in Nashville is Clifton Strengths, and so that's what we're going to be focusing on today to get everybody up to speed. For those of you I haven't had a chance to meet, and which is awesome because there's so many new people, uh, so there are a lot of you I haven't met yet and who haven't met me. So for those of you I haven't had the opportunity or the pleasure to meet, my name is Scott Fusell, and I'm the director or the host of House and Home. I'm the education director for CSL, and I'm a, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I'm a Beta Theta Pi from Middle Tennessee State. And if you're not familiar with it, I mean, if you've heard this before, it is the Harvard of the South. Uh, and uh, so if you're not familiar, man, just Google that and it'll pop up immediately. So it will not. That is a joke. Um, so, hey, a couple of things that you should know. As, uh, man, we are so, so very excited about you being here today. So very excited about the way you're investing in yourselves and your professional development and your personal development and for you committing to being with us in Nashville for those of you who are going to be able to join us. Uh, by doing that, it just reveals to us how committed you are to your own development, how committed you are to this experience, and most importantly, really, uh, how committed you are to the men and women who call your particular chapter house home. So for that, we can't thank you enough. We are so grateful that you decided to spend some time with us this morning. And we're so excited to be with you in uh, two or three weeks uh, back in Nashville. So uh, if you have questions during the session, I'm going to do the best I can to uh, kind of facilitate the discussion, but also uh, keep an eye on the chat. So if you have questions on something that that Casey covers during the session, please hop over into the chat, ask your questions there. Uh, that's just gonna help us minimize the background noise and, uh, and we'll do the best we can there. We'll also have some time at the end of the session to go over some questions and answers. So if you don't wanna put your stuff in the chat, uh, save those questions to the end and, uh, and we'll be able to address them then. So we, we think this is gonna be about an hour long session, but got nothing but time and we want to make sure that you leave here with your questions answered and that you're feeling really good about uh, the session today and the direction we're headed as we lead into uh, the Sutherland Institute. So I mentioned Casey's name a few minutes ago. You may be wondering who the heck is Casey. Casey Keller is our special guest today. She is the executive director of Sigma Kappa's National Housing Corporation. She is an absolute first ballot Hall of Fame human being. She's one of my favorite people on the planet um, and is the closest thing I have to a big sister that is not my actual big sister. So in real life. So you have your families of choice and you have your families of origin. Casey is in my family of choice all day, every day. So she is also the, uh, the co-host of a couple of podcasts that you might want to check out. One is Two Gen Xers and a Mic. And the other is the Making Shift Happen podcast, so which, shameless plug, she hosts with me. So uh, she's also, for the purposes of this conversation, she is a certified Clifton Strengths coach. And for those of you who are new to Strengths and weren't with us last summer in Denver, let me tell you, she knows her stuff back, forwards, and sideways. One of the, th th these sessions almost feel uh, self-serving because, you know, my job as the education director is to help develop other people, but I leave every time I sit in one of Casey's strength sessions, I leave here with 10 new things that I've learned. So, um, so I'm as excited to be here as you guys are, and I'm going to get as much out of today as you guys are. So, uh, so before we turn it over to Casey and we dive into really trying to review for some of you, uh, some of the content we covered last summer, but really level set to make sure everybody's on the same page as we go into this summer. Um, before we pass it over to Casey, I do want to talk a little bit about what the format of today's 
conversation is going to look like. We're going to do this sort of interview style, sort of quasi interview style. Uh, we're going to profile a couple of folks and their top five strengths. As you guys did the assessment, you should have gotten a report that kind of outlines your top five strengths. We're going to dive into a couple of folks and uh, really talk about you know, how they are similar and dissimilar, how they work together, how they complement each other, and some of the ways in which uh, you know they show up uh, in particular ways. So we're excited to do that. And then, as I mentioned, if you don't want to uh, drop your question in the chat, you can certainly do wait and do that at the end of the session. So um, as I mentioned, what we're really hoping to try to get out of this is to level set and get everybody on the same page. Uh, we had, you know, 30-ish people do the assessment last year and show up for that initial string session. We've got 30-ish um, people that are, you know, we've doubled the number of people that are gonna be at the conference this year. So we've got about half the folks that will be there this year haven't done the assessment or haven't been exposed to strings. So we're gonna be trying to get everybody on the same page because we're gonna do a deeper dive when we get together in, uh, at Vanderbilt or at Na in Nashville for the Southern Institute in a few weeks. So super excited to get everybody on the same page, singing from the same sheet of music. And with that being said, I just wanna know, are you ready? And if you are, drop a quick thumbs up or a, hey, yeah, I'm good to go in the chat. So I know that you're ready. Let's see here. I love that Casey's already getting a shout out. We haven't even gotten started. Thank you, Lori. And uh, so if you're ready to go, oh my gosh, Marissa has already found the thumbs up emoji. I didn't even know that there was one. That is exciting. So I'm seeing everybody's engaged. I'm seeing some readies. I'm seeing some, yeah. And I see a few thumbs up. If somebody wants to chat me and tell me exactly where this thumbs up emoji is, I would love to know it because that is super fancy. So, all right, Casey, are you ready? I am ready, Scott. It looks like um, Nicole is also in the chat, though, and she can hear but maybe not see. So if maybe you can provide a little technical assistance, that might be helpful. I so, will see try. what I can <laughs> do. So awesome. uh, I'll tell you what, while I try to help her, you just let me know when you're ready for me to advance a slide, okay? Okay. You can go ahead and advance one and I'll get started. Perfect. All right. Have at Perfect. it. All right, so as Scott said, I'm Casey. I thank all of you so very much for being here. We know it's early for some of you, maybe all of you, and Scott and I probably are showing a little too much enthusiasm, but that is what we will bring to you right now and also in Nashville because we are so very committed to your development. We are going to relentlessly speak into you because, oh, Nicole got it, Scott. Sorry, just okay, want to, so she's good. We Perfect. are so very committed to this because we need you to understand how much the work that you do matters. And if you don't hear that enough, know that we're going to start it today, letting you know and it's gonna carry through to the housing conference. So hopefully it will carry through when you get back to campus and the work that you do starting in the fall and for the school year, because we know sometimes it just isn't easy. So let's go, let's go. I was often called bossy, overly assertive, critical, trying. I asked too many questions. I was a real go-getter. I was also told that I should be more like someone else. Hmm. And all of these things bothered me for a while. But what I've learned about myself and what I've been able to tell other people is that you betcha I'm bossy. And my bossiness is emphatic assurance. I am trying because I have an inquisitive mind and my questions come from a desire to understand and constantly wanting to learn more. So I'll ask. I'll seek knowledge. I've also come to learn 
that I get to conclusions sometimes, most often, faster than others. I'm courageous. I like connections to people much more than small talk and meeting new people. Whew, I learned this one. I have a deep psychological need to do what I say I will do. Deep psychological need. I hate indecision. I do not care for apathy. And I am not okay with the status quo. It may not be obvious yet, but you will come to know that I love being on stage. I love to present, I love to teach, and I love to share the knowledge that I seek. I need a creative outlet. I firmly, firmly believe that everything can be better than how it currently is. For a long time, I didn't know why. I just knew that this was how I was. And it turns out that this is who I am. Mm. It's how I behave. It's how I think. It's how I act. It's how I feel. It's part of my DNA. This all comes naturally to me. I'm curious if any of these things are ringing true for you. Strengths helped me name my talents, and then it provided me language that allows me to share how I consistently show up. And another person who was completely fascinated with the way people show up was Don. This is Don Clifton. He's the father of strengths. He dedicated his life's work to studying human behavior and specifically how humans think, act, and feel. And what he found is that there are core talents within each of us. As a matter of fact, there are 34. We have them all. He created Clifton Strengths and the assessment to measure the degree in which we think, act, and feel. And then he turned all that research, he backed it by science, into language that you have now in the reports that you have as a part of the completion of the assessment. And he did this as his life's work because he truly, truly wanted to know what will happen when we think about what is right with people rather than fixating on what is wrong with them. Casey, will you say that one more time? He wanted to know what will happen when we think about what is right with people rather than fixating on what is wrong with them? Love that. Love it. Uh, can I ask you a question? You betcha. You ever find out? You ever find out what would happen when we fixated on what is right about people? I believe he did. Before his death and with 15, with nearly 50 years of that research and science-backed data, he found that when we are aware of our natural talents and we focus on using them daily, we're more satisfied, we're engaged, and we're actually happier. And simply stated, anything can happen. Here's how. If we start learning our talents, that's the natural way of thinking, acting, and feeling, right? Natural way of thinking, feeling, behaving. Thinking, acting, feeling. 
we do this first by taking that assessment, right? We raise the awareness. So we understand what comes natural to us. And then we pour time into it, time and effort. Reading the insight reports, understanding all 34, just what they are, naming them, we have all 34 of them. We're gonna focus on just our top five and then starting to recognize what are those cognitive behaviors just with my top five. Noticing the way that you think, you act, you feel. And doing this while developing your true set of skills that comes natural to you. That's putting in the effort, that's the investment to get to this true development of your strengths. That's the ability to consistently provide a near perfect performance. Your strengths are present when it's consistently near perfect performance. And that just means, so my number one is strategic. My mind, Sometime, sometimes is in a whirlwind. I love it and I hate it. I love it most days because I'm not daunted by problems. Someone comes to me, I have to be clear about asking, do you want help or do you need me to listen? Now hmm. it's taken me 50 years to realize this, that sometimes I need to pause and ask and not get in to fix it not get into the three options, the three directions. I've told Scott numerous, numerous times, there are multiple ways for me to get next door. I'm gonna go the most efficient route. I can go around the block. I can hop across the fence. I can go down my path and up my neighbor's path. And I'm not daunted by any of them. But my strategic mind gives me options that all will get me next door. I just need to figure out which one works best for my situation. That's my consistently providing a near perfect performance is understanding how am I thinking, how am I feeling, how am I behaving in my situation. Understanding my situation, understanding my talents, accepting them, recognizing my thoughts, feelings, and actions, and then consistently delivering my performance. Making sense? Yeah, so what I'm hearing is that it's, well, you said it earlier, the, the, the self-awareness is just essential. Mm -hmm. And that's why the assessment is so wonderful, because, you know, there you know, I'm 50 now, and I've thought for years that I knew what my strengths were. Uh huh. And you couldn't tell me differently. Right. And then I, then I took the assessment, and not only did I learn a few things about myself that I didn't know, uh, but I also learned how I show up. Yep. And when I am more aware of how I show up and how my strengths show up, that just changes the way I'm able to work with people. And right. the other thing that is beautiful about the assessment and your top five is, you know, it's a wonderful, the, we'll get into this in a little bit, but when I know your top five, I'm better equipped to know how you're gonna show up. Absolutely. So when you are peppering me with questions about, you know, an opinion <laughs> that I have or a direction I'd like to go, I don't get offended by that. I don't get, I don't, like, God, would you please just get on board? I'm no longer in that mode. I'm not defensive. I'm like, oh no, she, as you said earlier, you have a deep psychological need for the information so that you can help us develop a strategy, which could be five different directions that we just discussed. And when I know that's how you're showing up, I know how to better utilize your strengths. I know how to better uh, support our relationship, all of that. And that's, gosh, that's self-awareness and team awareness is just essential. So love this. Do you want to dive into uh, the, you know, look at a couple profiles and kind of what a, a strengths grid would look like? Absolutely. 
absolutely, Scott. So I randomly selected a few of you, and I think some might be on. Now, some of you don't know that I randomly selected you. Some do. Uh, so Gina and Meg don't know that I selected you. Sarah and Catherine do. I'm not sure if Sarah and Catherine are on the line, but I think Meg might be. Uh, so, but Scott, let's start. Let's start first with you and me. So I'm going to uh, call an audible here. So Scott, Meg, I love it. Meg is um, on. So, so Scott just said that uh, this is so true about he and I. So a uh, little self-confession. He and I are very good friends. We, oh, Kathy, thank you, Kathy. Um, uh Scott and I have been good friends for a while now, and when I start to recognize someone's strengths without really having their assessment in front of me, I will work with that without them knowing. And then I will encourage them to take the assessment because we all have blind spots. And Scott, might have gotten a little annoyed with me because I have an inquisitive mind and I also like to know where we're going. And Scott sometimes doesn't care where we're going. He just wants to get started. And if you don't know these things about each other, it causes problems, right? It can cause some friction because we have life experiences. We're both 50, right? So we have 50 years worth of experiences and perceptions and biases that we bring to our friendship that also bring perceptions about each other. And we also have lifetimes of friendships that play a part of the friendship that we've created. So we have these past experiences within friendships that are molding the friendship that we have and are continuing to develop. So I have the benefit though of knowing a little bit more about strengths. And so I can recognize, ooh, Scott might be a snapper. He might be an activator. He might wanna get to it. Whereas I might need a little bit more information. And so I need to better articulate until I know a little bit more. And I might just throw him some, right? Like, okay, let's just do it. I don't care. I can go with the flow sometimes. So when you see your strengths with others out front, it's super helpful. When you don't, you fill in the gaps. And that's what we want to avoid. So that's why it's super important for us to know ourselves first. And then we can start recognizing others and we can utilize our strengths to help others recognize theirs. So yes, Scott and I work very well in concert, even though you'll see we don't have strengths that match. And we look like looking just at the numbers and the colors, it doesn't even look like we would get along just if you're going off of numbers and colors. And we're gonna get in, we're gonna take a dive into that because it doesn't matter where your numbers and where your colors are. It's not about that. It's all about awareness and understanding and breaking these perceptions that we have about how someone shows up and getting a better level of understanding of the strengths that people bring with them. Casey, can, okay. I, can I hit on something really quickly? I'd love for uh, you to. I love how you talk about filling in the gaps when I don't know some how somebody or why somebody's showing up, then I immediately start to fill in the gaps. And that is that is what we do really often. Like especially, gosh, in this in this we live in this crazy world now where um if you where it's just easier for us to disagree for whatever reason. And one of the reasons we disagree on so much and on so many levels 
is because we fill in the gaps with our own narrative and our own assumptions when we don't know why the other person is thinking the way they're thinking, feeling the way they're thinking, uh, et cetera. So we, this concept of filling in the gaps and creating our own narrative is not only applies to our relationships, but it's so much of kind of the division I think we see out in the world that it has nothing to do with our interpersonal relationships and our working relationships. So um, I, don't know, I, I just think there's a great takeaway in addition to strengths that we need to really give some thoughtful consideration to when it comes to filling in gaps. And I think we could, I, I'm just, I'm trying, I'm speaking for me. Uh, I'm trying desperately to get more to being like you in terms of, I don't have a deep psychological need for the information, so I'm not gonna pepper somebody with questions, but intellectually, I need to know more because that will help me not fill in gaps. And when I'm not filling in gaps, I'm filling gaps in filling in gaps with facts and not assumptions. Right. So I just love that filling in the gaps analogy and uh, wanted to speak into that a little bit. So I'll turn it back over to you. Sorry. No, don't be sorry. Thanks, Scott. And I'm going to jump back into that in a few more slides when we talk about some truth is truths about strengths, because I think that that is a critical part. And I also believe what Don Clifton believed so many years ago when he started this work, that anything is possible. And I believe strengths could be a game changer for our divisiveness, for how we treat each other, for bringing about a more civility, a level of civility and kindness, just gentle and kindness into the world and how we are interacting that could change the world truly so i'll get into that oh i just broke my necklace get into that uh momentarily okay so kathy thank you for letting me utilize your strengths so everyone kathy leads with communication maximizer input adaptability and activator I'm gonna ask Kathy some questions. So Scott, I don't know if you need to unmute her or if she can unmute herself. Uh, so Kathy, if you wanna to try to unmute yourself or- oh, I'm unmuted. Help. Awesome, I love it, thank you, welcome. Thanks for playing along today. So excited you're here. Woohoo! <laughs> Perfect, so I'm gonna ask some questions. I am happy to provide insight that I have about your top five. If anyone has their own thoughts on Kathy's top five, please drop those in the chat. Any observations that you wanna make, they are welcome. So Kathy, my first question is, have you ever been told that you are not good at something or that, okay, two-parter, that you should focus on being better in an area that seemed impossible to improve? Um, no, not, not having it worded like that. That's awesome. Okay. Um, anything in your strengths report that stood out? Um, that I'm a big talker, <laughs> but I think I knew that. Okay. I love it. I love it. What did that mean to you that you're a big talker? Uh, well, it was interesting doing this, how much it, it tied in with my job because okay. so much of it is influencing. And basically, I came pretty strong in the influence part and trying to influence 419 year olds to head in the same direction is pretty much my job. Without a doubt. So, Kathy, remind us where you are. Oh, I'm at the University of Alabama. If anyone isn't familiar with the University of Alabama, it's one of the largest Greek systems in the country more than 400 women in each of the chapters. And so Kathy is spot on. Her job is um, very much involved in influencing the sorority women that participate in 
the tractor. So critical that she might have some influencing skills. So she, again, her influencing strengths are communication, maximizer, and activator. So I love hearing that um, what came to you is that you are a big talker. I would maybe categorize that as your words matter to you. Is that accurate? Oh, definitely. You, you have to choose your words wisely and use them wisely in my position. Absolutely, absolutely, because it is an influential component. So communication, the strength of communication is about taking words, utilizing them in a way that tells a compelling story, becoming that storyteller, making sure that the unheard, be it a person or the story gets heard, making sure that those that don't step up have a voice and so you're becoming a representative of what needs to be said and not being shy about it uh, the other observations kathy that i would that i make about your strengths um please let me know what you think about this you love to take something that is great and make it phenomenal because good is not often good enough. Oh yes, that's that's been my history since I was in a sorority in college. <laughs> Great, that's your coming out. And that is also not being okay with the status quo, right? So anything can be better. And it's not that you are not appreciative of efforts that are being made, it's that you just truly believe that when you look at something, you see the best, you see potential, you see that you can influence to something better. And that's what you're working toward without minimizing the greatness that's already there. You can always put a cherry on top. Oh, I love that. my gosh, I love that. Casey, you cut out for just a sec, like right when you started to talk about, you said that's how your something shows up. And I think you said maximizer when you're talking about Kathy right there. You cut out on us. That's a like right the one word that we really, really, really needed to hear right there. They would have made all of that make so much sense. You bleeped out yes. on us. So, maximizer. yeah, that's the, that's the uh, the maximizer is the placer of the person responsible for putting the cherry on the top, I think is what we're going to start calling that. I love that. That is a great way to encapsulate that. I love it. Yeah. All right. So here's another observation. You are often impatient with those who want to sit around and discuss a plan of action. You want to jump in and take action. Too true. Too true. <laughs> you and Scott have this in common. This is your yes. activator. This is your, yep, your activator. And I, again, I call it the snapper, right? Like, can we just get to it? Let's go, let's go. We know what to do, let's do it. Philanthropy is two weeks out. We have to start talking about it now. <laughs> and and that's it. And, and I think that it's not that you don't have a plan. It's not that you are unwilling to think about it. It's that, come on people, let's just go. We don't need to think through every single thing. If there is a barrier, we'll get through it. We can just keep moving. If we move, we can move, we can move. Let's get it done. Let's go, let's go. Yep, very true. <laughs> I love this, all right. Okay, so you have a very strong level of flexibility and a willingness to go with the flow. I'm the oldest of a family with five children and grew up in an 1800 square foot house. You've got to learn how to adapt. Absolutely. And that's exactly your adaptability. This sense of flexibility and willingness to go with the flow 
So I mentioned earlier that our lifetime of experiences, um, our childhood, our upbringing has huge influence on our strengths. Our strengths are probably pretty well formed by the age of 10. So I love it. You've already identified, Kathy, that as the oldest of five in a household, right. If you're not adaptable, you probably aren't surviving. I'm the fourth of five. And that's why I know I was hands on hips, bossy, because I was struggling to be heard. Fourth of five. And I'm in between two boys. And so I wanted everyone to pay attention because I had a voice and I was getting drowned out. And so you better believe I was bossy. So we start forming these strengths so early on because of our life experiences. Okay. You have an inquisitive nature, so background information helps. Oh, definitely. Great, so this is your input. And I like to think of it as having um, a mental lot storage, right? And so you are putting, you're filing things away because at any given point, you can pull out a resource that might be needed because you love, love, love to be relied upon for information as a resource, as a tool. Um, it makes you feel so good when people come to you and say, hey, do you remember when we thought about these things? Do you recall what we discussed? Or, hey, I'm looking for information on, you can go to maybe that mental Rolodex, you can go actually to a file cabinet and pull out the resource. You are storing things away for future use. And so it's really helpful for you when in certain situations things are being planned for you to know, okay, what are we going to do so that you understand your usefulness and what your contribution will be? Nope, that's true. I, I'm constantly reading magazines, internet. You never know when you're going to need something. Great. So sometimes, Kathy, your input and your activator might be at odds, and that's okay. So your need for information and your need to take action, really just knowing yourself best, which you do, you're going to need to know when do I stop gathering the info and start making the plan. So I loved hearing you say things, something's going to happen in two weeks. So we need to have already been moving, right? So that is you already knowing that a plan is needed because we're two weeks out instead of two days ahead of time, right? So you have already started that thinking process, the gathering process, so that the activator can, can be at play. So you're meshing your strengths beautifully. Does that make sense? That's good. good to hear. Thank you. You are welcome. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Any other observations you'd like to share, Kathy? Um, well, there was, there was one about communication that, mm -hmm. um, I use a lot, which is there's always a yes. It's just not the yes you've been thinking about. And that seems to work out really well in the sorority world. Ooh. Tell me more. Oh, it's, it's normally, well, a good example would be where they decided to have like a a mini Coachella as a fundraiser. And <laughs> the fact that we only had one public bathroom and the fact that we couldn't tie off the space so anyone could come for free, it was just like, oh my gosh, this is going to be a nightmare. And it was like, 
yeah, we can do that. It's just not going to do it. We're not going to do it exactly the way you want it done. And, uh, you know, let's think about this because with the size of the sorority and with the, all the layers of the house corporation, the advisors, this and that and the other, my voice is actually quite small that I can't put my foot down and just go, no, we're not doing that. It's like, no, let's think about this and come up with another way that everybody will be happy and everybody can get on the same, same team. You are speaking to communication beautifully, Kathy. I like to think of communication as a yes and. Yes, I hear you. Yes, I understand what you're saying. And I'd like for you to consider these things because you, you have put, brought in a couple of things. One, there are in the position that you have, you may not always be the final decision maker or you may not have the authority to say the hard no. So you need to feed the need of influencing with communication. So how you can do that is to bring about the compelling reasons that they need to listen to your words, right? So you're going to use the language that you, that you use, you're gonna use those words to say, I hear you, I love the direction, I love the creativity. Have we considered these things? Okay, if this is what the outcome is, how do we get there? What components need to be put in place? So you can utilize the influencing nature of communication to get especially the members or the corporation board on board knowing that they're, they may not be seeing that broad picture and not everybody may be speaking up and also knowing there are going to always be limitations. So communication is going to be so important and it's your strong suit. It's your number one. You're, it's going to drive you. You're also going to have that kicker of maximizer, the kicker of activator, and you're hanging out over here with input. So you're learning, you're wanting more information. So this combination is allowing you to say, okay, I know my role. I know words matter. I also can just go with the flow, but I need to raise these issues. I need to raise these questions. I need to raise the level of understanding. And communication is what is gonna drive that because you said it earlier that words matter. Super important. And that is going to help drive the influence in what you're doing. I love it. I love hearing you say all of it. Hear it. Well, thank you. Hopefully, hopefully there isn't anything too wrong you can say about this. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I think strengths, when we again start forming this really strong, good understanding, it will help in any situation. It can quiet the storm, it can resolve conflict, it can make the awkwardness seem a little less awkward, it just can reinforce good, sound decision making. It's just a matter of us doing the work to become more aware, raise our level of understanding of ourselves and of others, and then putting our strengths into play every day. You're, you're doing the work already. Super, thank you so yeah. much. You bet, her thanks com Kathy. Her comment, her comment about, uh, I don't think there's anything too wrong about that, uh, was really interesting. I think you're gonna speak to that a little bit later, Casey, in terms of uh, universal truths. So I'm eager to hear that piece when we get into that a little bit later, yeah. 
Scott, you want to just flip forward to that? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I do want to just say that whether it's Kathy's or yours, there are two critical points that I want to make very clear. The difference between one and five is minuscule. The assessment measures the degree in which, again, we think, act, and feel. So your top five likely came as naturally to you as breathing. You simply don't think about them because they're innate to you. And it doesn't matter if you have all five in one color or a smattering of colors. You are who you are, and that is beautiful. These are the five fundamental truths about strengths. All right. We don't walk around with a big old name tag of our strengths and not yet do each of you have an encyclopedia of knowledge regarding the cognitive behaviors that go along with your top five and everyone else's. But we do walk around with life experiences. We walk, walk around with perceptions of the way people show up. And when anyone is thinking, acting, and feeling in a way that we're like, hmm, that's a little eyebrow raising, we have perceptions, we have misunderstandings about who they are, where they come from. And these perceptions are often, again, what leads us to filling in the gaps about who people are. So hopefully these truths will help us get rid of those gaps and provide a better foundation for how we show up. So strengths are neutral. One strength is not better than another. They're not good or bad, strengths just are. And you are who you are. You can just as easily become the theme poster child as you can become the theme problem child because there is a dark side of strengths. However, fundamentally, they're neutral. So it's all a matter of how productively you apply your strengths because again, we're going for that near perfect performance. So productively applying your strengths will get you to them remaining neutral. They're not good or bad, they just are. You are who you are. Strengths are not labels. We as humans are far too complex to be defined by just one word. We're not our race or gender or sexual orientation and we're not our theme name, we're not one strength. Strengths are the tools that help people understand and appreciate this complexity and the diversity of humanity. All strengths lead with positive intent. Oh, I love this fundamental truth. Mm -hmm. Strengths guide people. I'm gonna say it again. All strengths lead with positive intent. It's what we do, it's how we think, it's how we act, we feel, and we speak all naturally. So the same situation can produce vastly different reactions. And if we have an understanding that strengths fill our filters that we bring to each situation provides insight on how we have a tendency to think, act, and feel, then we'll stop having these misperceptions of people. Okay, here's a biggie. We all have 34 innate talents. These are our 34 strengths. Not all 34 of them are on fire for us. Thankfully, right? Can you imagine all 34 of them just going all haywire inside? The differences in our strengths are not problems that we need to solve. Instead, they are the resources that create the advantage 
when we are aware of them, when we develop them, and we use them as our differences because the differences are the advantage. The differences are the advantage. The final fundamental truth is probably the biggest game changer of all, especially in this pandemic. Mm -hmm. People need people. You can fight it. Go ahead, just try. But it's true. You might believe that you're better off doing things on your own. But the reality of it is that your strengths didn't develop in a vacuum. Kathy and I, we had four siblings to help us develop ours. And while your strengths are truly uniquely yours, it's with the others support with other people's support and the encouragement of others that we become our best versions. Mm -hmm. I know I'm a better version of myself because of my friendship with Scott. He brings out my strengths and I hope I do the same for him. We all have blind spots. Don't get me wrong, I think I'm pretty awesome. That's also because I have had years of therapy. But in all <laughs> seriousness, <laughs> we need other people to see what we simply don't see for ourselves. Yeah. Right? We lack self-awareness at times. Sometimes we're too full of ourselves. Sometimes we need the help of others and the way that they see us so that we are reminded of our greatness. And that is their gift of our strengths to us. And we have this incredible opportunity to appreciate the contributions of others by sharing insight of their strengths in action with them. And that's what we're getting to. When we're aware of ourselves, then we can become more aware of others and we can give that to them. Mm, mm, mm. I think I, Scott might be learning a thing or two. I yeah, no, you got me thinking here, um, Casey, as Please. you want to do. Um, <laughs> Um, so I have I've been sitting in a front of a screen for a couple hours this morning because on Thursday mornings I, uh, I lead a men's group yeah. and today we were talking uh, the theme I'm starting a series on happiness and one of the things that we were talking about was uh, that you are the company that you keep and uh, we we're talking about uh, listing our friends and and creating two columns one column is called real and one column is called deal and deal there's my southern coming out that's d-e-a-l not d-i-l-l so just want to clarify that um and one of the people on and you know and we have people who we would consider real friends we have people who are deal friends and one of the ways one of the guys on the Paul described it is that um, the deal friends are transactional. Mm -hmm. The real friends are interactual, if that makes any sense. Like there's an interaction with you. There is a deepening of that relationship there is a willingness and an ability to speak into each other not just sure. tell me how the game was make me laugh uh will you do this workshop for our team um there is a there's interaction and there's transaction and i just thought the way this individual described it this morning was beautiful because what's um when we talk about people need people we need those interactive relationships 
like right. we're describing right here. Like one of the reasons I am better today than I was years ago is because we have a interactive relationship, not a transactive rela relationship. And uh, so I, I just, I, this people need people bullet. I, I can't let that go. Uh, and I, I just, I love the way you describe that. And I think with so many of us being so isolated, even in a house, like at one of the um, homes at, at Alabama, where you've got 400 women walking in and around and about that place at any time during the day, where it still can be a pretty isolating experience. Like I, I um, you know, I, it's, um, I can't imagine uh, sitting in your chair as a house director and trying to support this many men or women. I think it's gotta be a pretty, uh, even in non-COVID years has to be a pretty isolated position. And that's why we, we need to be reminded that people need people and we've gotta create our own little community of people, whether that's with a, you know, the students that live in our house, specifically with uh, house directors in our on our campus. I mean, there's we need each other, and we need to be able to speak into each other. So, you got me thinking. So, uh, one of the things that I, I love, Casey, that you always talk about is not only do people need people but we one of the reasons one of the things that's wonderful about needing people and one of the things that it's wonderful about having people in our lives is they're able to help us with our blind spots um and help us understand sometimes it's it's really wonderful to help for other people to help us understand just how unique we are and kind of where our greatness shows up uh would you speak to that a little bit Absolutely. Yeah, I think a lot of times we don't see how amazing we are. We only see and hear. I think often we hear negative self-talk more than anything. On a loop. On a loop. And we got to get a new playlist. We just got to get a new playlist because we have so much to offer. Each individual has so much to offer the world. And I want each of you to know that you are significant. You definitely are unique. You matter. The work that you're doing matters. And I get it. You don't get told this often. And a lot of times you get told the opposite. Maybe this will help reinforce it. Your strengths are uniquely yours. There are several of you that have Achiever in your top five. Across the country and around the world, Achiever is in the top five most often. But you have to line up 33 million people to get one person to stand next to you with your same top five but it quite likely won't be in the order that yours is and what that means is not only are your strengths uniquely yours they won't show up like you even with the same top five hmm. and when you know you're six through ten and then you're 11 through 16, they definitely aren't you. Your strengths insight report is also uniquely yours. It's not a cookie cutter. 
And if you don't believe me, share your report with someone on this call. You can do that through the app. We'll get into that. So we didn't get into Sarah's top five, but she also has strategic as number one as I do. And just here's a little glimpse. Sarah's Strengths Insight report states that she inst um, instinctively, this is what it reads, instinctively you usually feel satisfied with life when, you, when your innovative thinking style is appreciated. You automatically pinpoint trends, notice problems, or identify opportunities many people overlook. My Strengths Insight report for strategic as my number one strength set states, by nature, you pay attention to what is going on around you. You listen, you quiz people, you read, you probably take notes on key points. I don't hear anything that's the same because Sarah and I, even though we have strategic as number one, are uniquely different. Sarah matters. She has a contribution to make. So do you. What you do matters. Your contribution is uniquely yours and we need it and we might need it now more than ever we all need a sense of belonging and our houses can provide that i am certain you can provide it and it will be life-changing gosh i wish we could stop right there but we've got a few that's that like the, such a perfect way to end it but we've got more to get to i i, I want to stop for just a second um we didn't really put a time limit on today's webinar because we didn't want to short change everybody we we spent three hours on strengths at last year's uh conference and so we're trying to catch some of you up in a kind of an expeditious kind of way so but i do want to be mindful of the fact that look you guys if you need to drop please uh absolutely you, you have the green light to do that uh if you have a few more minutes we we're going to continue going but um gosh casey i wish we would have held this slide for the last one because it's I, I want people to leave hearing that message loud and clear up front and center that you are uniquely equipped to do what you do um and cheryl is the way she's going to go about it and the way she's going to contribute to this experience is different from barb is different from donna is different from ann is different from john is different from deb but it's all still amazing right. so very good um can i ask you uh next question is uh Talk about the colors um, and talk about those four uh, domains of, uh, of team strength, if you would. Of course, yep. So the colors matter also uh, in relationship to your strengths. So you'll see four, purple, orange, blue, and green. And in that order, executing, influencing, relationship building, and strategic thinking. So you probably noticed that also on your report if you've read through it. So these provide additional insight on how each person, again, executes, influences, build relationships and things. So some people have a particular genius that helps them get things done and others have a gift for building relationships or the power to influence people or to sort through data. And while each theme has its own power and edge, it can really be useful to know that your talents help you do one of those things, execute, influence, build relationships, absorb, and think about information. 
when you have more than two of your top five in one color, you lead from that domain. So as I mentioned, Kathy leads from influencing. So her maximizer, activator, and communication, so she has three of her top five are in influencing. So she is going to naturally jump in. She will instinctively consider what needs to be said, who needs to be heard, and how to tell a compelling story before she will build an efficient work plan. If we had um, gotten into Sarah's, I would tell you that she leads from strategic thinking. She's gonna gather as much information as possible so that we can discern the most, so that she can discern, sorry, the most efficient path forward. These domains can be useful for thinking about how our talents affect other people. Mm. I also lead from strategic thinking, but also influencing. Now I have the benefit again of knowing my full 34. Here's what's curious. I'm responsible for association management. You know, the management of associating with others. <laughs> Yet my relationship building strengths are very low. So I rely on my influencing strengths. I'll get back into that. These domains provide the framework for you to see how powerful your individual contribution is to the group and how others will make things happen, how they will influence, how they will build relationships, and how they'll work with information. So Scott, that's the color and the combinations. Awesome, thank you. You bet. So, you know, one of my favorite parts when we have these discussions is the different ways you describe strengths. And I think this has been intertwined throughout the day, the way you've uh, described, you know, how, um, the different top five, so to speak, the, the way they've kind of worked together, complement each other, sometimes can compete against each other a little bit. Uh, give us, uh, you know, it's still a little early. Let's see, it's 10, 10. I'm an early, I'm an early lunch eater. So I'm already thinking about what my next meal is gonna look like. So could you talk a little bit about, give us a food analogy, Casey, if you would talking about strengths. I'd love to, cause you know, I love food too, Scott. My body was not meant for anything but carbs. So when we think about strengths in terms of food, strengths are not waffles. They are not perfect squares that hold the right amount of syrup. They are not walled off and protected from one sitting next to the next one. Strengths are like spaghetti. They're all intertwined and they're all overlapping. They move in and over and around each other with ease. You can slop on some sauce. You can add a meatball. You can create an even more delicious meal by adding more on. So the more information you have, the more knowledge, you can add some cheese. Shoot, you can have some clam sauce if you want you can mix it up. So as I mentioned, I lead from strategic thinking and influencing, and it doesn't mean that I can't build relationships. Six out of my nine relationship building strengths, oh gosh, I can't believe I'm gonna admit this, are between 23 and 34. Six out of nine. Yet I managed to build and maintain relationships. And I do that because I use this spaghetti approach, right? I overlap my strengths to do so. I need to be aware of my lesser strengths so that I can manage them. I just don't fixate on them as weaknesses. I don't try to fix them. I manage my knowledge of them and I use this interactiveness, this interconnectivity of all my other strengths because they're all interwoven. It's just like these spaghetti noodles. So I use my influencing, my strategic thinking, and my executing to build and maintain my relationships. 
So if you're I'll, doubting. I'll, I'll, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I think you're getting ready to say what I was going to say. Go ahead. Oh, I, probably not. I was just going to say, so if you're doubting that your strengths or your leadership domain are putting you in the optimal spot for success as a house director or one of our business partners, or even as an organization leader, then I need you to hear this. Your strengths are. They absolutely are in the optimal spot for success. The, the thing I was going to add to that, Casey, is that um, I want to be real clear and make sure everybody understands that just because something's not in your top five doesn't mean you're not capable. That's one of the things I love about what Casey just shared is her, six of her nine relationship building strengths are way down the line. That's right. But that doesn't mean that they're weaknesses. It just means that they're, I, you know, gosh, I, I think about uh, every year when, whether you're an SEC football fan or an NBA official, uh, uh, like the, the league always says there are points of emphasis this year. And so they establish points of emphasis based on the things that they become aware of the previous year. You know, what were the blind spots that they had? And uh, so because something's not in your top five doesn't mean you're incapable. It just means be mindful. Uh, and one of the things that I used to love about John Wooden is he would talk, they spent, and I'm making an assumption that everybody knows who he is, but he's legit the most uh, successful college basketball coach in NCAA history. And he spent 90% of his time coaching players up on their strengths and very little time on their perceived weaknesses or things that were growth areas. Because man, if I can unleash your greatness and those things that you're already innately wired to be extraordinary at, then why would I spend any time over here trying to uh, compensate and spend time on things that, eh, may or may not be your strength. So uh, I, I just wanna make sure everybody hears that loud and clear that just because something's not in your top five doesn't mean you're incapable. If you may, you may not have any relationship building in your top five, that doesn't mean, oh my gosh, I live with a hundred women and I shouldn't be in this job because I should know how to manage relationships. That's not at all what that's saying. It's just saying it's something to be mindful of. That's exactly right, Scott. They're my relationship building strengths are lesser known to me. There it is. I'm not as aware of them and I don't need to be because I can build relationships with other strengths. I need to be mindful that my those core relationship strengths where they sit so that I can understand what I need to utilize. Taking the John Wooden, I'm 5'2", and I don't like basketball, so I'm never going to develop basketball skills. It's unsatisfying. I'm not innately good at it. My free throw, right? So I shouldn't be focusing on that because my chances of success are very low. My 34 strength is called restorative. Some of you have restorative in your top five. Again, my number one is strategic. I should not spend time developing restorative because it will only cause me to be unsuccessful. Restorative is there's one fix something is broken like a bone it breaks i can put it back together strategic is my number one there are multiple paths for me to take that's my sweet spot i'm going to be much more successful developing harnessing the power of strategic i'm going to be happier i'm going to be more engaged i am going to be satisfied in strategic than trying to deliver on restorative. It's not going to be worth the effort. 
Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. The key to success is to fully understand how to apply your greatest talents and strengths to your everyday life. For now, that's the last truth bomb I'm going to drop. <laughs> strengths transcend all areas of life. Whether this is the first time you've dug into your talents or this is old news to you, the effort you are making to understand what you are naturally good at only stands to enhance your everyday life. For that and for using your talents to enrich the lives of these amazing college students that we get to interact with in these houses that we manage, thank you. Uh, last question I got for you, Case. Please. Uh, talk a little bit about next steps and what uh, those of, uh, those on the uh, line are going to join us in Nashville. What do they need to do before hopping on their flight, jumping in their car, packing a bag? What do they need to do? Absolutely. So if you haven't done the assessment, no worries. We appreciate that you came today. This information might make a little bit more sense once you do complete the assessment read that the uh, strengths insight i would download the app there is um in wherever you get your apps the app store uh it is gallup g-a-l-l-u-p access a-c-c-e-s-s -S -S. download the app sign into your gallup portal via that app so that's going to be that email address that you use to take the assessment and if you forget what you set your password to, that's okay. You can uh, reset your password there too. Reread, I would reread your Strengths Insight um, Guide. That report is where it's at, I'm telling you. This report is the one that is unique to you and your top five. Your signature theme report is your top five, but it is basically, the same information about your top five that you'll find in the book. So you all got the ebook and the descriptions of all of the um, uh, all of the strengths, the signature theme report, those descriptions just for your top five are in the signature theme report. Your strengths insight guide is the one that is unique to you. Check out that spreadsheet that Scott sent you with all the attendees. Share your top five with each other. So you will do that in the app. You can become, we can become our own strengths community and check out each other's strengths. And I would say lastly, Scott, let's be curious. Yeah. Be courageous enough to raise your level of awareness and understanding of yourself and others. I it looks like love it. We might have some questions. We do have a couple of questions. I, I want to, okay, first off, I'm suddenly having a freak out moment because I've written Gallup incorrectly in every email that I've sent in the last month and a half. So I appreciate the grace that you guys have extended me and nobody publicly shaming me for the fact that I can't spell Gallup correctly. Um, so I had somebody ask if it was uh, the, if the app was Gallup or Strengths, uh, or Gallup Strengths, and it's actually, it's Gallup. And I, I'm the, this is a, a risky thing to do. I'm not sure if it'll be able to happen or not, but the, um, I'm gonna put my phone up to the screen. So hopefully you can see what the app looks like, but it's just a, it's a gray G. So when you get into the app store, it's a, a gray background with a white G. And let's see, I don't know if you, I can't see my camera. So hang on a second, I wanna see how I'm showing up. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There's what it looks like. Yep. All right. So when you see that one, you'll know, that, oh, that's the one. So it's, uh, and it just says access below it. So um, I can't reiterate enough how important the app is because all the things that are in, like it's, it's amazing because you've got your top five right there. And so you've got, it's really easy to get those reminders and it's easier to become more aware of what your top five is if you can just, you know, two, you're two taps away from having that really quick reminder of, oh, that's that's why I'm showing up the way I am. Uh, and there's always an article, there's additional content in the app and all of it's free. 
uh, yes. the, and it's just like, holy crap. I mean, I didn't, I had no idea there's this much information about out there. So one of the things that's just so wonderful, <clears throat> excuse me, about this, and Casey has mentioned it time and time again, is the awareness, the awareness, the awareness of ourselves and those around us. I, I just, I, it would be wonderful if, you know, a, a dream of mine is to get strengths into each of our chapter houses, at least with the executive committees and uh, and our house directors. So we better understand each other and ourselves. Um, as Casey mentioned earlier, our strengths are already, uh, by the time we're 10, our strengths are, so, are are almost all together and uh, very little differentiation from, from then on out. And so, you know, even if, even though we've got uh, 19 to 22 year olds that we're working with or, or 19 to 30 year olds, in my case, uh, I was in college for a really long time. Um, the, it's, a uh, I, man, just a half that as a launching point for better understanding each other and managing your relationships, things would be extraordinary. So, um, and it would allow us to be more curious, which I love that Casey wrapped up with that. So uh, I am going to open up the floor now for audience uh, Q&A. And uh, so you can, if you have a question, just unmute yourself and um, I will, uh, we'll do the best we can to manage this as best we can. So questions? Unmute every, everybody. So if you have a question, just jump in. This is Deb, and I have an observation, sort of a question. One of my top five strengths is also probably one of my biggest faults. How do I make it to be a, keep it to be a strength and not lean on it or lean towards it as a fault? Great question. That is a great question. So Deb, I think sometimes we think that it's a fault because we're not always aware of the power of the strength. So we don't recognize it, uh, the, the true actions that we need to take of it. Uh, we don't see it the way others see it. So we we have barriers with seeing it as it is a strength. And so um, I'm happy to talk. What, what strength it is and then what you can do to start to see it differently. So if you want to connect with me separately, I'm happy to help you. Okay, great. Absolutely. It's activator. <laughs> I love it. Some, yes. Sometimes I uh, want to activate too quickly. I don't know that there is such a thing, but. <laughs> oh, can, yes. We can look at your other strengths, though, and see uh, maybe that uh, we'll put them in combination and maybe that okay. can help. OK, thank you. You bet. Thanks uh, for being vulnerable and sharing that. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have a question as we start to wrap up here? You may have to unmute yourself because I am. When I unmute everybody, it gets me gives me fits. So uh, if you have a question, jump in there, unmute yourself, and ask away. Scott, I did. I'll just answer this um, publicly. Donna had asked about the ebook. Let me just check the. It should have come when you completed your assessment. So let me just check on that for everyone. Thank you, guys. You bet. It sounded like somebody was getting ready to jump in with a question. Who was that? It's Deb again. I I did the assessment a number of years ago. I have the book. So is that the same as the ebook? It is. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You bet.
Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Nashville and way too long. So Yeah, and I didn't fall asleep today either. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, I wasn't gonna bring that up. I wasn't gonna bring that up. You can uh, share it, I don't care. <laughs> Deb was under the weather the first time uh, she and I got to work with each other. And uh, she, uh, the <laughs> cold medication did, was not her friend the last time we were in training together. Right. I have a quick question, if that's okay. Sure, Amy. Amy. Amy Makota. So thank you for this session. Um, I will say it was definitely worth getting up for. <laughs> On my end, I'm three hours behind you, but I'm very glad I did. So as Good. far as the conference goes and this particular concept, we're going to, from what I understand, be revisiting this at the conference. And then if I'm correct in thinking that way, when we do, are we, is it going to be reviewing what we've learned today or is it diving a little deeper? Either way, I'm thrilled with it, but I just wondered what the conference is going to to add to this conversation today. No, that's a great question, Amy. And I'll let Casey speak to specifically how she's going to um, lead her session on strengths, but I, I, I wanna maybe set the, um, the expectation for what, when I'm designing a curriculum for a conference, this my idea is or my thought my philosophy when i'm putting together conferences all the sessions in some way shape or form should be connected to each other to build off each other uh should support each other there should be something you take from casey's session that really comes to mind when you hear marianne's session uh that you should be able to connect with in will's session so when we you know we'll have that gosh we're having over 20 hours of educational programming and by the way i don't want anybody to freak out about that is everybody that we've asked to be there is there because they're industry finest and they're terribly engaging and it's going to be like there is a way to learn and have fun simultaneously and we're going to check all of those boxes so we're going to kick off our first session or like we're going to have a kickoff session uh on a tuesday on the first day and then that afternoon we're going to an actual studio in on music row and we're going to talk about okay here are the different ways the different roles that each musician in the studio plays uh and specifically if you're a house director some days you're the lead singer and you got to be the voice other days you're the drummer and your job is just to keep the pace and uh, other days you're the elect uh, the your lead guitar and you got to add a little bit of flavor and some days you're the bass player and you're just you're just trying to keep uh you're laying the foundation so we're going to take that concept and watching these musicians do what they do and we're going to bring that spirit into the, re the remaining sessions of the of the conference so knowing str knowing strengths knowing the different roles that you play we're going to connect strengths with those particular pieces and the different hats and the different roles that you play. So, Casey, maybe you can talk a little bit more specifically about how you, you plan to interweave uh, strengths into conversation. Yes. So it will be a deeper dive. So you know you best. And so one of the reasons why we wanted to give this information ahead of time is so that I can just pull in some of these as reminders so and it is then just familiar oh yeah she said that I'm glad she's just reminding us of it and so you all will do more talking at the table with each other sharing your strengths and I'll guide you through some activities where you're going to put your strengths in action and so you're going to see how your strengths are coming alive and how you can start to see them showing up in education sessions in the house that you work in or if you're a business partner or you work for a national organization in the role that you have uh, some for some this is brand new this level of awareness or 
and then we'll get into how you can start to see it in the members that are in the houses or the members that you're working with and we're again just living day in day out being at our best and what that looks like in the cognitive behaviors in the way we think the way that we act the way that we feel so it is a much deeper dive and as scott said said relating it to then the other sessions that you will be going through Good question, Amy. Does that help, Amy? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, both of you. You bet. You bet. Um, any uh, uh, let's see. There was one question in the in the chat about how do you share? How does somebody share their report with you, Casey? Can you speak to that really quickly? Sure. So, of course, you can just send your top five to me via email. So. Um, but also I would really, really encourage you to download the app, Gallup Access, that app. And then you can find me in the community at caseykeller72 at gmail.com. And when you share your report, um, at, when you share it, since you've taken it previously, um, I'll share mine back. You, if you are taking it with the code that you send, that I sent you, you don't have to share. I already have access to yours. That's how I knew Kathy's and Sarah's. Um, thanks, Scott. So John asks, so John, if you download that app, you will find me at caseykeller72 at gmail.com and then you'll share and then I'll share back and then we'll be connected. And then you, again, can start building the community of those that are on that registration list that Scott sent uh, at the end of May. Um, and then, okay, Donna, I'll check for a code for you. Um, well, I'll get you a code, not a problem. Awesome. Um, quick, any questions? Uh, Amy, I loved your question, by the way. Uh, for those of you who may be attending the conference for the first time or uh, maybe attending for the first time since uh, we began leading it, uh, any other questions about expectations or maybe we could get somebody from last year to maybe, and by somebody, I mean somebody like, you got, a, I, I see a few names on here that I recognize from last year, Judy, Angie, uh, Ann was on earlier. I don't know if she's still on, I'd scroll through, but um anything that our returning guest might offer up for um in terms of expectation setting for those who are going to be coming for the first time is there anything you guys would share uh, about your experience last year and things that were helpful uh as you prepared for the conference and things that you hope you see again this year See, and a bunch of folks are still muted, so I'll, I will not put that kind of pressure on people. I do have a question. This is Donna. Sure. Uh, so we take the assessment, and if I took it again, probably would have different answers depending on my mood. Um, will that does that have an impact, or would I be? inherently in the same categories do you think you'll inherently be in the same categories so your mood won't impact it even if you have a frame of reference for your job as opposed to your home life um if you have had life altering events and multiple ones that really have changed the perspective of your life that may change your strengths, um, so your strengths order, because again, the difference between one and five is minuscule, the difference between six and 10 minuscule, because it's measuring the degree in which we think, act, and feel. So today I might be more of a learner than I am strategic, or I might be in maximizer mode than self-assurance mode. Um, so the, they may they may rearrange but 
your strengths are not my, restorative is not going to jump in, into my top 10 <laughs> unless okay. I have again life altering events that change my life perspective okay yep great question Donna great question yep any other questions as we start to wrap here all right well, let's uh, start to put a bow on this thing. So the uh, to, so today we you know strengths overview. That's uh, you know that's uh, um, that's what we covered today, and uh, we talked a little bit about how we can complement each other, and we and I, and I hope we've level set so that everybody's singing from the same sheet of music and is been exposed to the same content as we head in uh, to Nashville. So. Uh, eager to to get everybody there when we get there and this is kind of going back to i think it was amy's question earlier um that uh you know we're going to be talking about you know strengths and strategies and getting the right people in the right places and integrating the strengths uh with with the other content that we're going to cover so uh we are so excited about getting everybody together in nashville uh I will tell you that this whole conference feels uh, terribly self-serving because it's going to be that, like I'm going to be I'm going to y'all are going to have to remind me, hey, you're supposed to be hosting this thing, not just participating, because I'm going to get so sucked into the sessions and being uh, a part of it that I'm going I'm a little worried at times that I'm going to forget that I'm supposed to be coordinating uh, this thing behind the scenes. So. Uh, anytime you guys want to give me a little elbow and say, hey, Scott, I need you to tighten it up because uh, you're a little too into this and uh, you probably have things to do, uh, you have the green light to let me know that. And But we have a really a, a wonderful uh, experience plan for everybody when we get there. So um, I'll be there on the 18th. I look forward to seeing you all then. Uh, I think a lot of people coming in the 19th and 20th. So if you have any questions between now and then, I need you to pick up the phone, shoot me a text, shoot me a, a phone call, email, whatever. I want to make sure that we have set you up for success and that you know exactly what to expect and you are dialed in to have a great experience in Nashville. So uh, my cell phone number is in my email signature. Uh, please feel free to use that. Um, it's easier generally to get in touch with me via text, so don't hesitate to do that. And uh, I know a few of you already do that, and it's super helpful. Um, so uh, if there's anything we can do between now and a couple of weeks from now to get you ready uh, to help you in any way, I need you to please uh, not hesitate to pick up the phone or shoot me a text or email. So uh, until then, thank you, thank you, thank you for dialing in today. Uh, this has been an incredible session, as it always is. Casey, for just being a light and for speaking into people the way that only you can today, um, no, we're grateful. It's just uh, the knowledge and the expertise and the clarity with which you speak to each of these, the strengths in general, and uh, to each of them individually is just really uh, extraordinary. So uh, we're grateful for your partnership and frankly, on a personal level for your friendship. So um, you guys are amazing. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be a, a, a great couple of weeks ahead of us. And um, we're going to be excited to see you in Nashville. So again, thank you for getting up early, some of you, and thanks for